welcome to mineralogy lecture 1 uh, so this deals with the physical properties of minerals so here under this uh, the topics to be covered in uh, detail are color former habit and tenacity so what is a color the most striking characteristic of a mineral it is uh, generally is its color so minerals come in a very wide range of colors so there are uh, we can see uh, the, the examples of the same mineral species that have very varied color suppose if we take quartz it is a, a colorless or white mineral but it can also be in different colors like a pinkish yellow green brown or even black then colors of the corundum so that is uh, uh, which is made up of alumina it range from light brown to deep red and dark blue so the color it is often Uh, say that it is the most striking property however uh, for the identification purpose the color exhibited by the mineral vary very greatly uh, suppose uh, if you take a, a, an example as a quartz it is a colorless mineral some min varieties they appear in different shades like brown so this brown variety of quartz is known as a citrine or pink variety that is known as a rose quartz or uh, uh, purple color if the quartz exists in purple color it is known as a amethyst these colors are due to the certain amounts of the trace elements in the mineral composition suppose if we take the beryl uh, there are uh, two varieties like uh, green and then blue variety so that uh, if uh, it will exist in a green variety that is known as a emerald and if the color of the beryl is blue that is known as aquamarine these are due to the variation in the trace element chemistry of the beryl then color variations Uh, they may occur in a single crystal for example uh, bands may appear in tourmaline or you can see also the patches in fluorite so what is the play of colors so the term play of colors it is uh, uh, nothing but it refers to uh, a series of colors like prismatic colors that uh, some minerals exhibit when they have uh, viewed or when they are rotated in various angles so these prismatic colors are uh, comparable uh, or we can see as in the case of a rainbow or uh, when gazing through a glass prism so what is the reason for the play of colors so that is it is generally caused due to the light rays breaking into uh, different uh, uh, components colored components as it enters and exits the mineral so we can say that examples like uh, diamond quartz and other colorless minerals then what is a change of color change of color means it is a similar phenomena as that of the play of colors but it will extend over a broad surfaces Uh, the difference between the play of colors and change of colors is so it's almost the change of colors is similar to the play of colors but it will uh, extend over a broader surface so we can say that example as a plagioclase feldspars then what is another uh, terminology schiller schiller it is nothing but the, the orthopyroxene minerals in particular hypersthene so it will have a metallic luster in which all the colors which are reflected on minerals they are exsolved on parallel crystal planes so this is known as a schiller then another uh, property that is known as iridescence so this iridescence is nothing but uh, uh, a display of the colors which are caused due to the interference of light rays either by tiny water globules trapped in the crystal lattice or uh, or as in the case of opals which is known as opalescence or it may be also caused due to the distortions in the atomic structure as we have seen in the case of labradorite it's a type of a plagioclase feldspar we can say the examples like uh, opal and labradorite these are the excellent examples for iridescence And then what is a tarnish tarnish is nothing but when minerals exposed to air some minerals uh, they develop a surface tarnish and may display iridescent colors so these are mainly due to either oxidation or it may be also due to the chemical reaction of the sulfur and other atmospheric pollutants that can cause uh, tarnish so when the surface nature of the tarnish is apparent it can be uh, clearly distinguished from the minerals real color by scratching or chipping it so that means how we can identify from the true color and the tarnish so here uh, we can say the examples like uh, chalcopyrite it is a copper iron sulfide so is cufes2 and bornite that is cufes4 s4 so they often tarnish to an iridescent mixture of colors so here uh, this bornite is also known as a peacock ore so it will exhibit different uh, colors so this uh, colors exhibition it is mainly due to uh, the tarnish property then what are the causes for variation in the color so that means the true color of the mineral depends upon the nature and arrangement of its constituent ions 
so uh, suppose if you take the minerals containing light colored like uh, suppose if you take uh, aluminum calcium sodium potassium zircon barium strontium if the minerals contain these elements then uh, definitely we can say that these are very light colored or they might be also colorless suppose if the minerals contain iron titanium manganese chromium cobalt nickel vanadium and copper then they are usually colored minerals so and uh, the causes for the variation in the color they also be due to different types of bonding in carbon atom suppose if you take a diamond it is a colorless and also the nature of the bonding uh, in the case of uh, graphite it is a black so these are uh, the variation in the color of the diamond and graphite these are due to the type of bonding if you take uh, diamond it has a covalent bond whereas a graphite if you take uh, it can have van der waals bond so like that uh, uh, the uh, causes for the variation color can be explained then it can also be due to the valency of an ion so suppose if uh, uh, mineral contain the uh, element in the fe2 plus form then it is a green color and if it contains fe3 plus it may be a red or brown or if it contains both fe2 and fe3 plus then it is known as a in a, then will it appear in the black color so these are the causes for variation in the color then also the minerals colors may also vary due to structural defects suppose if the mineral has a, any defect structurally then it will exhibit different colors suppose if we take quartz it acquires a purple or a black or a smoky color as a result of the radiation damage and the frenkel floss they also give some uh, fluorides uh, their purple color and other causes of the coloring it includes the presence of the tiny inclusions of other minerals uh, as well as the oxidation or reduction of the specific metals especially iron and then uh, there are uh, two types like uh, we can say that uh, uh, minerals can be classified into idiochromatic and allochromatic so a mineral's color it's a most distinctive characteristic but uh, when it comes to the mineral's color they can have a few uh, very useful diagnostic tool as well for instance olivine epidote uh, and other some minerals they are generally uh, invariably they are green in color so what is idiochromatic means a mineral uh, has a significant amounts of the elements that can influence the selective reflection of a particular wavelength then the mineral is idiochromatic that means it will uh, uh, it the amount of an element can influence the uh, selective reflection of the particular wavelength so that it can emit that uh, light and uh, hence the mineral is idiochromatic suppose if we take uh, olivine it is green epidote is green spalerite so all these are the examples for the idiochromatic minerals then uh, some minerals can have a wide range of colors for uh, some minerals it is not at all diagnostic for some minerals color is a very diagnostic for some minerals it is not at all diagnostic so due to their composition idiochromatic minerals are uh, self colored and uh, it is dependable and it is a predictable feature suppose if you take uh, malachite that is green in color cinnabar it is a red and blue azurite and we can also say that gold is in yellow and then silver white and uh, it is also claimed that certain minerals are allochromatic that means they will exhibit different colors suppose if you take uh, uh, ruby and sapphire so these are the varieties of the corundum and we can say that they are allochromatic so in what happens in allochromatic minerals minor or trace elements they determine the color suppose if we take uh, sapphire it is a deep blue in color so this sapphire is a variety of the corundum and uh, this deep blue color it is mainly due to the presence of iron and titanium and uh, uh, if you take uh, ruby and other gemstones so the deep red color of the ruby it is due to the presence of chromium and uh, chromium it is also present in some uh, uh, emeralds that is uh, it is a beryl variety so the green color of the emerald, emerald it is due to the presence of chromium and also chrome diapside and some tourmalines then allochromatic minerals have uh, different colors because of the minute impurities in their structure or uh, it can also be due to the uh, the color is also due to the structural defects in this instance the mineral's color is variable and it's an we cannot say exactly that it is a uh, it will appear in uh, what color so that it is unpredictable and uh, the blue in amazonite so amazonite is an orthoclase variety so here orthoclase feldspar variety is amazonite and the yellow in heliodor in spodumene it is a lithium mica and uh, rose in rose quartz all these are the examples for the allochromatic minerals 
then pseudochromatic minerals so what are pseudochromatic minerals means due to variations in the light diffraction pseudochromatic minerals are falsely colored in this uh, what we can say that the color is changeable but yet we have to distinct uh, to that mineral uh, the examples uh, it includes uh, the colors generated by opal and the labradorite shiller reflections all these are the, we can say that the examples for the pseudochromatic minerals then coming to the another property that is the former habit so this is a very important diagnostic property uh, when the minerals uh, they will crystallize under uh, favorable or ideal conditions then they assume a certain external form so this property that means when they assume an external form this property is known as a habit the shape of the mineral it is also known as a form so here the examples we can say that uh, galena and halite they occur in the form of a cubes so we can identify galena or halite in the form of a cubes and then if you take calcite it occurs in the form of rhombohedron and if you take uh, beryl or apatite they will occur in the form of hexagonal prisms so these are some minerals which occur in uh, suppose if you take uh, garnet there are uh, minerals which will exist in more than exist in more than one form suppose if you take garnet it occurs in the form of rhombododecahedron and trapezohedron and uh, the, the germinal the general terminology it used in the description of a former habit or so number one we can say that crystallized means when a mineral is present in well developed crystals then it is said to be crystallized example rock crystal so rock crystal is a variety of the quartz so it was uh, we, when it is uh, in the well developed crystals we can easily identify that it is uh, uh, crystallized and we can identify its uh, structure also so that is known as a crystallized so the example is a rock crystal nacl then uh, crystalline so crystalline is most of the minerals are crystalline and they have a crystal system in them we find a regular internal structure example orthoclase augite etc then coming to the another uh, uh, terminology that is on the cryptocrystalline so they appear as though they are amorphous but when examined under the microscope they show uh, very uh, little uh, uh, amount of the crystallinity or we can it can show the traces of crystallinity example chert flint all these are the examples of cryptocrystalline variety then another terminology is known as amorphous so what is amorphous means they possess no regular arrangement of the atoms uh, that means it does not contain any uh, arrangement of the atoms and this condition is very rare in the minerals and we can say the example as an opal uh, it's an excellent example for the amorphous form. So amorphous and cryptocrystalline minerals have no crystal system. So the, the another uh, uh, forms which we can discuss are uh, so uh, I have included all these in a very detailed form. So what is this form? Micaceous form. Micaceous form means it consists of thin plates or uh, scales. So that can be easily we can uh, chart it out or it can be easily separable. So example is muscovite, biotite, chloride. All these exhibit micaceous form. Then uh, another form is known as a lamellar. So what is lamellar means it consists of thin leaves or plates. This is very similar to the micaceous and foliated. So we can say that example as a volastonite. And uh, another form that is known as a foliated form. So what is foliated means it consists of thin leaves or plates which can be easily separated. Uh, the example or talc or piment they, uh, they are the example of a foliated form another form that is known as a scaly form so what is a scaly means it consists of small thin scales like in the form of a scales so example is a tridimite so this is a very uh, diagnostic property of the tridimite then uh, another form it is a tabular form so this uh, consists of a broad and flat surfaces the examples are calcite baritis etc then capillary form means it consists of uh, exceedingly slender or very uh, minute like uh, hair like crystals examples are tourmaline cuprite and then another form is known as a fibrous it consists of thin fibers or filaments which can be easily separated so we can say that asbestos it has a fibrous form then another form it is known as acicular so acicular form means it consists of delicate and very uh, small crystals and slender needle like crystals very perfectly arranged so these are uh, the acicular form so the example is a natrolite then what is a columnar form means it consists of uh, whatever the fibers or filaments they will offer occur in parallel groups so that it will occur in the form of columns so example is a hornblende and beryl then another form it is a bladed form what is bladed form means it is a, a tabular or a platy structure the individuals they resemble in the form of a knife blade or in the form of a grass 
so the blades they may be very uh, parallel to one another or they may be divergent examples are kyanite steel bite and stibinite etc then what is a banded form banded form means the name itself indicates that it occurs in the form of bands and these bands may be uh, they will either in a parallel wavy lines or they may also exist uh, in the form of a parallel straight lines so these bands they have different color sometimes the same band may show different colors as well so the excellent example is agate agate show uh, banded form then granular form so this granular form it is our uh, closely packed grains which may be either coarse or it may be fine so example is chromite that is another form that is oolitic so oolitic means it consists of very small uh, rounded particles so these are about the size of the fish egg so example is a calcite and another form that is known as a pisolytic form what is pisolytic means it consists of rounded particles about the size of the peas so the only difference between the oolitic and pisolytic is the, about the size example for the pisolytic form is the bauxite the another form that is known as a globular form so here the spherical or nearly spherical the name itself indicates that it will appear in the form of a globules or a spherical form example wavellite so another uh, botryoidal form so here it is uh, uh, it will exist in the form of closely united spherical masses resembling a bunch of the grapes so examples are silomelain and malachite maxillary form means it consists of very rounded masses which are larger than the uh, botryoidal that means larger than the grapes example is malachite and reniform reniform means large rounded masses they resemble in the form uh, the form of a kidney so example here it is hematite nodular form nodular form means the mineral it will exist in the form of rounded masses of irregular size so examples are apatite and flame concentric form means Uh, it will exist in the form of a spherical layers about a common center so these are similar to the as we can see in the shape of uh, onion so examples are malachite concretionary concretionary means they will exist in the form of a rounded and nodular masses example is a flint lenticular form means they are in the form of a lens shaped that we can say that uh, flint it will exist uh, both in the lenticular and concretionary form amygdaloidal form means it will exist in the form of almond shaped mineral masses they will occur in very small cavities in lavas so we can say that the examples as zeolite calcite and other silica minerals they exhibit the amygdaloidal form coming to another property tenacity so here what is the tenacity means uh, how a mineral will behave when it is allowed to break or blend or cut or crush or hammer or tear then it is known as a tenacity so tenacity means how a mineral will behave when it is uh, when an attempt is uh, made to break blend cut crush hammer or tear it is known as a tenacity then what are the types of the tenacity so there are uh, five to six types of tenacity number one we can say that it is a brittle so what is a brittle brittle means the name uh, itself indicates that it can be easily broken or it can be powdered that means it cannot be cut into slices or pieces so most of the minerals are brittle example we can say that quartz calcite barite fluorite etc then another type of tenacity that is known as a sectile so what is sectile means uh, a mineral it is said to be sectile when it can be cut off into small slices or pieces so the resulting slices they break and they can fall to a powder under a hammer that means if they have undergone uh, and they if they are under a hammer then they uh, the mineral will exhibit uh, uh, slices they will break so and they will fall to powder examples we can say talc gypsum graphite etc they are excellent example for sectile nature then another uh, form of tenacity is malleable so what is malleable means if a piece of the mineral it can be cut into sheets under a hammer then it is said to be malleable examples gold silver copper and uh, ductile means it can be easily drawn into wires so the same examples we can say that gold silver copper most of the metallic elements will have this malleable and ductile nature then another uh, form of tenacity is flexible so here uh, what is flexible means uh, the thin layers of the mineral they can be bent without breaking but they will remain uh, uh, bent after the pressure has been released that means if the pressure has been released then the mineral will uh, appear in the same uh, bent form 
so that is known as a flexible example is chloride then another form of tenacity is elastic so what is elastic means the layers of the mineral it can be bent without breaking but they resume their former position when the pressure is released so excellent example we can say that uh, micaceous minerals like muscovite and biotite they show the elastic tenacity 